Okay, so let's talk about, you're looking at the live view first on the 5D Mark III, but most cameras nowadays have what they call white balance. Now you can find your white balance mostly on top of the cameras or somewhere where you see WB. You just press it one time. Once you're into your settings WB, white balance, you then, uh, well, let's just first scroll over. You'll probably start off at auto white balance, which looks like that. It's pretty good. And... But now you can have fun with your images. You can just select the default different white balances. But this is mostly for JPEG shooters, what I'm referring to. Because um, RAW shooters, we can change it afterwards. Um, but if you're a JPEG shooter, which a lot of people are, just scroll over to this white balance where you get to K. Go from white all to white balance all the way down to K. And you'll see that that pops up, this uh, Kelvin now. Then you simply go to your menu, your selection menu, and you can start dialing your, you can move one of your dials, however your camera is set up to move a dial. As you can see, that little dial to the right of mine shows me that I'm using the scroll wheel at the top of my camera. And look at the difference between, as you look at that cardboard box in that image, look at the difference between 100 Kelvin. It just gives it a different look, and as you scroll, through it and as you go higher the white balance changes of course which gives that whole box a different look and this goes all the way up to 10,000 and it can get quite orangey or warm if you will um, so now when does this come in handy again if you're um, a JPEG shooter or you're viewing your images immediately with someone and you want to know what the white balance is roughly based on your visual um, instead of using a gray card and doing it all in post just go to Kelvin and dial it in. Now here's the thing, the white balance there is 3200 roughly on that box. As you can see the box looks just about right at 3200 in real life it's probably closer to 3000 even maybe even towards 2800. I'm looking at the box as we're talking um, too much. And, but that's kind of lifeless so I like to you know use your imagination a little bit and and come up with it. Come up with the uh, different white balance, if you will. Now, as we scroll over to this wood, for example, here's the uh, wood trim. Let me go ahead and um, bring that into focus. Now you can see that wood is nice and rich and dark. But if we go back to white balance and I start dialing it, I can make that more warm, or I can make that wood get lighter. Um, of course, I can change my ISO on that in that position, and you know I can I can go pretty much up there pretty high. But um, let's go with it. Let's go with the white balance again. So you can see that as you scroll through your 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 normal settings, you can do everything. You can have a lot of fun with it. And here's auto white balance. So there's auto, and the auto is pretty much on the money. Um, but as I look at the wood and then look at this, I can again scroll up and make it warmer or I can cool it down, which is probably close to 2500 um, at that wood. But look on the back wall now, behind that trim, that back wall is quite not that cold, that, that cool if you will, back there. Um, and let's see what the default auto white balance does. So it looks more like that on that back wall. And let's go back to there, and that's what we had it at. So in each part of a room, your white balance is different. So the white balance on this wood is around 2,500 um, with the lighting on it. The white balance over here is closer to uh, 3,300, I think it was. So in the same room, you can get different white balances and it's so easy to play with, just like what I just did there. Wish you guys all success. Hopefully this was helpful, and comment if you think that uh, I need to go a different direction with that.